were both doing you know lots of other work on the side you know whether it was like making corporate music or I was working in a record shop and did all sorts of bits and pieces just to pay the rent um, I, went, I went to Morocco and walked up the Atlas Mountains and caught some mystery virus and nearly died. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> but I found myself in the process, you know. That's quite special. And then, uh, yeah, and, and, and then, then we changed our names. To, yeah. I was Pond Life and he was Goose. All these great ideas that you have down the pub in Hammersmith yeah. late at night. Um, and one of the great ideas was calling a new label hospital. Yeah. Yeah. So we thought, you know, we, who, who who knew that it, it would work out as well as it did? Because we, we instinctively knew we had to do something that no one else was doing, and we named it Lounge Court. It was our kind of our term for the early stuff that, and it is the early stuff that came out on Hospital. Um, if you listen to it now, it's an appropriate sort of genre title because it is very much analog um, lounge music at drum and bass tempo with fast beats. You know, part of the process was going to um, charity shops and car boot sales yes. and looking for the shittest lounge album that you can find and then making a tune out of it, yeah. you know. <laughs> like one of the decisions, the first decision we took after we come up with the name, concurrently with that, we, we decided definitely we would never release anybody else's music from hospital. <laughs> because it had been a pain in the arse releasing other people's music on Tongue and Groove. And we were just like, let's let's just do our own music, otherwise it's long. And of course, we stuck to that for a while, and then we started to get good demos. <coughs> of course, these things just kind of they slightly messily they just evolve, and they and they probably happen because you're not looking for it, you know. But then, of course, you you find yourselves going down the pubs and thinking, well, of course, this is I think this is the history of music. This is the history of record labels. This is how things ideally should happen. You don't resist it, embrace it. I think first and foremost, the one reason maybe why we thought collectively that we'd like to do it is that we're now in a place where, you know, certainly in London we're known for doing Brixton Academy, which is a very large venue, um, or maybe being involved in things like the Love Box Festival and the occasional fabric show, but those are, that's pretty much all we do in London. So first and foremost, the, the opportunity to do a, a midweek kind of different kind of event at a venue where we've never worked, like XOYO, was extremely appealing. It then, you know, just sort of quickly putting two and two together, um, Rupert Fotek is um, someone of whom, you know, we've certainly Tony and I have been a big fan since his first record. He's obviously been in America now for many years, um, but him playing a modus operandi set, which for those that might not know, is basically the classic Fotek era, that, that classic kind of metalheads '97 sound. So he's going to play alongside Lincoln. Um, and Fred being graphics because we thought what would be nice to have like as we said earlier you know on the one hand one of our most famous artists and then alongside one of our newest and youngest so Landslide's going to come and DJ and also uh, a guy called Andreas Sarg who's one of his artists names is Swell Session um, who's I believe a musical genius from Gothenburg it's just a great opportunity for us to um, I guess particularly maybe to our 2012 hospital fan base, some of whom are probably very young and actually won't know many of those names. They'll know High Contrast and Fred V and Graphics, but they may not be aware of some of the others. Uh, and that's that's you know part of what a good record label does. Best part of running a label, the absolute best part, is basically building a career for someone else. It's It's discovering a talent, nurturing them, helping them to get the best out of themselves, and then just seeing them grow and seeing them smash it in terms of not only just selling music, might be DJing or, or whatever, but actually seeing them build a life, mm. doing what they love doing. And that, that for me, mm. is it's an amazing thing to be part of. 